What is good, boys? Um, so I just lost $33,000. Um, pretty brutal day for me, not going to lie. You're probably saying, why did you even risk $33,000 um, in the market? I didn't. I risked $8,000 on this trade and I got stopped out on ES. And then if you can see the tabs, we lost $25,000 in our first gambling stream ever. So yeah, that was really, really, really unfortunate. But uh, I guess that's just how the cookie crumbles. Let's get into this trade recap. So man. So first and foremost, um, we had a bunch of news today. We had ISM services PMI. We had unemployment claims. We also have NFP tomorrow. So odds that I take a trade tomorrow. Pretty low, especially due to recent events. Um, but yeah, we have NFP, non-farm employment change, unemployment rates. And then we also have an FOMC member speaking at 11. Does not look optimal to trade. Today as well, we had a bunch of news. Uh, Non-farm employment change, unemployment claims, ISM services. So I was going to wait till at least 10 to look for a trade and that's what we did because of ISM services, PMI. So coming into that, if we just take all of this off um, pre-market, we had identified these equal highs right here, these highs right here, these high time frame highs up here. We saw that boom, we have all of these low resistance draws on liquidity on the move up. Okay, and then we didn't really have much to the downside besides this draw on liquidity right here. Okay, now going into market open, market opens, we come up, we sweep out these draws on liquidity, and obviously we're going to be waiting for 10 to hit, which was, I believe, this candle right here, this big candle. Okay, that made a BPR within here. And honestly, I thought this was, it looks like seek and destroy the way that this price came down to this 15 minute candle. Because as we can see, we see the sweep, we see the break. We're getting pretty vicious moves to the upside. I saw that as a seek and destroy taking out these super low time frame sweeps of liquidity. We break structure, we get a tap in there, boom. Uh, extension breaking out of this BPR and then my stop loss was underneath this breaker block first take profit was set based off of those four-hour highs that we had set right there and unfortunately price got some legs up went right past this high and then boom legs all the way down and I'm not going to lie I think if I was on either side of trading today, whether it was short or long, I think I would have gotten stopped out because this was my long position. Um, I probably should have realized, I think the main takeaways was just understanding that, hey, we've already taken out a lot of low resistance draws on liquidity. Overall on the high time frame, we're coming off of like an extreme sell-off and we're consolidating. Odds are when we get consolidation after an extreme sell-off, that's the retracement and we're typically going to go down even more. Um, same thing in an uptrend. If we get a big move up and then consolidation, typically we're going to get um, another move up after that. So I guess it was just around that time for price to get there. Um, and then in terms of the short bias side of things, um, I probably would have seen this BPR and been like, oh, we filled it. I would go short here, maybe stops above the BPR after this sweep, break, BPR, invalidate, the, like a bunch of bearish confluences here um, that could have, like if my bias was bearish, that could have given me a reason to go short here. But regardless, I think I would have been stopped out. And then let's say if I even was able to find anything within here, I don't think I would have been able to find anything within here in terms of a short because of how choppy this price action got. And then boom, we flood past this um, imbalanced price range and then boom, price just continues down for the rest of the time. Uh, we can talk about NASDAQ too. NASDAQ, um, Similar-ish situation, um, we had boom, low resistance draws on liquidity, 
all the way up. On NASDAQ, however, we did take out these high time frame highs that I wanted to see ES take out. Um, so market open, we immediately rip up. Uh, let's see, where's the news candle? This is the news candle right here at, oops, this is the news candle here, right here at 10. Um, not really much that I saw in NASDAQ, hence no trade taken. If I saw something, I would have taken it. But um, we see this leg down after, and I think this is a similar situation with ES where, I mean, yes, we did get the sweep of high time frame liquidity, so I probably would have been waiting for a, a five minute retrace, but there was no SMT divergence. I just, like being completely honest, I don't think I would have seen this short um, setup uh, for price to want to come all the way down to these high time frame lows down here. So again, unfortunate trading day, really unfortunate in terms of uh, gambling. Literally first gamble stream ever on kick and we lose 25K in literally like under an hour, bro. So yeah, tap into the next kick stream and see what happens then. Um, but yeah, pretty freaking ridiculous. Um, I, if I'm you guys, if, and if I trade Forex, I'm definitely not trading tomorrow due to NFP. Forex is typically horrible during NFP. Indexes, I, I, something that I've noticed, not as bad with a uh, non-farm payroll. So that's, uh, not really, not really too horrible. Um, but yeah, today was a brutal day, not necessarily in terms of trading. I think e either direction I would have taken a loss, but man, gambling shit was, uh, was pretty tough. So anyways, I appreciate you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow on the stream to potentially trade um, on NFP if we see anything set up. If so, definitely de-risking. Cause man, we, we haven't, we didn't trade on Monday cause it was a bank holiday. Didn't trade on Tuesday cause I was in Mexico. Didn't trade on Wednesday cause I was in Mexico. First trading day back and ugly. Looks like we're gonna have a, a red week um, unless we can catch a really awesome trade tomorrow. So that being said, I appreciate you boys. Peace.